Here's a question for you. How much is your smartphone actually worth? Is there a way to judge whether or not your smartphone is worth the amount of money that you're paying for it? That question came up as I was thinking about the iPhone SE versus the Samsung Galaxy Ultra, S20 Ultra. Obviously, they're not comparable in terms of how the, the features that they have and everything else, they're not comparable in that way, but in terms of price to performance, in terms of overall value, is one better than the other? Is one overpriced and one not overpriced? These are questions that I had. I figured I would put together a scale where I could go through and look at how much each phone cost versus how much each phone was actually worth. And the results I found are kind of interesting. So let's let's get into it. The phones that I covered were the S20, S20 Plus, S20 Ultra, LG V60, the Pixel 4 and 4XL, iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, and SE, as well as the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. I wanted to put together a model that would help judge price to performance of the current newer smartphones on the market. This is by no means any kind of scientific exactly test, but I made it as balanced as I could. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I set up this score sheet, what score each phone got in my opinion. The scores are represented in US dollar amounts, but they could be just raw scores without the dollars attached. I thought using dollars would be easier to visualize and understand. First, let's go through the categories and the possible scores for each category. Each category is worth $100, except for audio, uh, which is actually worth $100 if, you, if there's a headphone jack, but if not, not $100. The categories, again, were selected from responses that I got from viewers regarding what they felt were the most important aspects of a smartphone. You can improve a score if you feel that a phone has a feature that's above and beyond what the baseline should be. Uh, you can also take away points if you feel like the phone is not up to snuff compared to other phones of this quality. So here are the categories. Camera quality, $100. Battery life, $100. Software updates and security updates. $100. Screen quality, $100. Screen size, $100. Powerful chip inside, $100. Build quality, durability, IP rating, those kinds of things, all scored for $100. Storage and expandable storage, also worth $100. Wireless charging is worth $100. And audio is worth $50. <laughs> but if there's a headphone jack, then you get an extra 50. The phones that I'm looking at, LG V60, Samsung S20, S20 Plus, S20 Ultra, the OnePlus 8, the OnePlus 8 Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 SE, as well as the Pixel 4 and 4 XL, and the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. So let's get into it and see first how these things scored, and then we'll get into the results of the tests. and. I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. So why don't we just go over to the computer and, and then do that. First off, we're looking here at the LG V60. For camera quality, I gave it a 75 out of 100 just because the LG's camera quality lags just a little bit behind these days. Battery life, also a 75 because in my experience, LG just hasn't had the greatest battery life. The software, they never update their software ever. <laughs> It's, they were probably the worst about it, so I gave them a 50. Uh, screen quality, 100. Screen size, 100. CPU, 100. Build quality, 100. Storage, 100. That includes whether or not it has expandable storage. Uh, I gave all of these, I gave all of these scores mostly because I just really felt like LG was up to the same level as the other phones that we're talking about in terms of the overall quality. So I gave full scores for anything that was, you know, met the baseline of what we should expect. So that's the, uh, and the, and the V50 got a hundred, a hundred, the V50 scored a hundred in audio because it has a headphone jack. I could have scored it higher because it has 
a really, really good headphone jack, but I didn't. I just scored it at 100. Uh, it might be the only phone that gets 100 in the audio department. Let's go on to the next. We've got the Galaxy S20 camera quality. I gave 100. Battery life, 75, just because it's a slightly smaller phone, slightly smaller battery. Software, a little bit better than LG, but they don't do a great job over at Samsung of updating either. It sometimes takes them quite a while. Uh, the screen quality, screen size, CPU, I, I, all of the Android phones in this list all have the same CPU except for a couple, which I'll mention. And so I gave them all a really, I, I gave them all full scores for these things. Uh, story, storage for the S20 has expandable storage, so it gets the full score. Wireless charging. I gave Samsung phones a little bit extra because they have that reverse wireless charging feature. So they got 125 uh, just because they were that added a little bit more value. And of course, there's no headphone jack, so the audio is 50. Let's move on to the next. Here we've got the S20 Ultra. Camera quality, 100. I would have rated this higher because of the different camera mechanism on the back of the phone. However, there is the ongoing uh, problem with autofocus on that camera, so I just kept it at 100. Battery life, 100. Software, again, 75. Uh, screen quality, 100. Screen size, I gave them a little bit extra because it's a very big screen. Uh, CPU, build quality, storage all get full marks and wireless charging again gets 125 because it's uh because of the reverse wireless charging and then of course here is the audio at 50 dollars so galaxy s20 plus scored 100 175 100 100 100 uh, basically 100s across the board reverse wireless charging gave it 125 no headphone jack gave it 50 the audio is good but no headphone jack you don't get full points for me might not be the same for you so the galaxy s20 now at as as we finish this as we go through these i have another chart at the end that's going to show you what their score was what their actual price is and how much that score actually deviates from how much they actually cost. So let's move on to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. 100 camera, 100 battery, software, again, a little, a little down because of the slowness of Samsung. Screen quality, 100. Screen size, 125 because it's got a giant screen. CPU, now I marked this down to 75 because this has the Snapdragon 855 chip in it as opposed to the newer 865. So I marked it down just a little bit. Uh, build storage, 100 each, 125 because of the, the reverse wireless charging and audio. I gave 100 and I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, I gave I gave a 100. It's probably, it, it should probably be 50. So Galaxy Note 10, which is the smaller brother, the not quite so awesome Galaxy Note. 100 for camera, battery life 75, it's a small battery. Uh, software again, 75. Screen quality, it's a 1080p screen. Screen size, yeah, it's a decent screen size. It's 6.3 inches, so I gave it 100. $75, $75 for the 855 instead of the 865. Build quality is great. Storage, no no expandable storage in this, so it loses it loses 50 bucks because it doesn't have the expandable storage. Wireless charging again. I believe this has the reverse wireless charging, so we are, we are up to 125. And audio, 100. Oh, I know why. I know why. I know why this is 100. I gave an extra $50 for the S Pen on the Note phones. So these last two were at audio scored 100. I gave them an extra $50 and I just stuck it in audio because I didn't have an S Pen category. So the extra 50 is for the S Pen on these two phones. Now here we go, OnePlus 8 Pro. Uh, 75 for the camera quality, OnePlus still hasn't proven that they can, they can hang with the big boys with the cameras. Uh, hundreds across the board for everything else. OnePlus does a really good job of just like uh, the very basic stuff they do really well. Unfortunately, on storage, they don't have expandable storage on, on their new phones. So 
they only get 50. Wireless charging, yes, finally, so they get the full 100, and just 50 for audio. That's for the OnePlus 8 Pro. The OnePlus 8, basically the same score. Um, yeah, basically the same score for the OnePlus 8. I didn't see any reason to, to dock the OnePlus 8 for anything more specific than uh, the OnePlus 8 Pro. Now we get into the iPhones. Uh, the iPhone 11 Pro, I gave 125 for the camera, battery life 100, uh, software 125, and I gave Apple across the board 125 because Apple supports their phones for at least five years of, of operating system updates. That's the reason Apple got 125 across the board. Screen quality, screen quality, screen size, CPU, build, all of those are just as, as good as you would want them to be. So I scored them all in 100 storage, no expandable storage and, and small number, uh, like only 64 gigabytes to start. So Apple gets docked for that. Wireless charging, uh, there is wireless charging, so they get that. There is no headphone jack, so they only get 50 in the audio department. Now, so the 11 Pro Max, gets 125, 125 on the battery life, 125 on the software for the reasons I just stated. Uh, screen quality 100, screen size 125 because it's over and above what I think is normal. So I give it a little bit extra. Uh, the CPU 100, the build 100, storage 50 for the reasons explained before wireless charging exists. And the audio uh, only gets 50 because there's no headphone jack. All right, now we go to the iPhone 11. 100, 125, 100 for camera, 125 for battery life, 125 for software. The screen quality, a lot of people, I mean, I, I'm just going by the numbers here. I don't think in real life there's there's that big a difference between the screens. I know there is in not real life, though. So, so... I docked the one the, the iPhone 11 for this. Uh, screen size, CPU, build, all across the board. Uh, they use aluminum instead of stainless steel in the in the build, but it's still a very solid build. It's still a very quality uh, quality materials in there. Storage, of course, they get knocked down uh, 50 bucks for not having expandable storage and starting out at 64 gigabytes. Uh, wireless charging, they get full 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 marks there. Uh, audio, they get knocked. So now we go to the iPhone SE, and so the iPhone SE is fifty dollars and fifty dollars for camera quality and battery life. The camera is good, but it doesn't have all the features of the other phones. Uh, it it ha it has only a few. It doesn't have night mode. It doesn't have deep fusion. It's so not quite worth the full marks the same with battery life the battery life is not great about three to four hours of screen on time software uh great updates five years worth of updates so they get full marks screen quality again knocked down to 50 screen size knocked down to 50 uh, both because it, it's a lesser quality screen it's uh and it's a smaller screen than probably any uh, anything else on this list but the cpu is the A13 just like all the other iPhones, so I have to give that full full marks. And then the build quality is still very good, still very good uh, flagship level build quality for the iPhone SE, even if it is an old design. I can't take marks off because it's an old design. Uh, storage, same story. Uh, 64 gigs is not enough to start with. Wireless charging, has it, so 100 bucks. Audio, no headphone jacks, so only 50 bucks. And uh, now we get to the pixels. The pixels were more interesting to me than anything else. The pixel camera quality, I gave 125, of course, because the pixel generally has the best cameras. Battery life for the pixel four, I put at 75 because the battery is not great on that, but it's not absolutely terrible. Software, screen quality, screen size, I put all, way, all the way across the board 100s. CPU, I gave a 75 because it's the Snapdragon 855 and not the 865 chip. So build quality would be, I, I think they're, I think they're on par with everything else. So I'll get that storage, no expandable storage. So they get knocked down and then wireless charging. They, they have an audio, no headphone jack. So there you go with the pixel four. Now pixel four XL starts to score a little bit better in some places. 
we've got camera quality at 125, battery life good, software good, uh, screen quality good, screen size good, CPU is about, uh, CPU is the 855, not the 865. So build quality and storage. That's what we've got right here. Wireless charging, of course, and audio, no headphone jack. It gets knocked down. So those are the phones and their scores. Now let's move over to talk about the scores that they got on my list and then the actual price and the differences between each one so that maybe we can get a sense of price to performance value. Okay, so here we have the total scores. We have the amount uh, we have the amount overpriced in gold, the actual price, and the PHT value score in blue. So the actual price is in red, the price over or under is in gold, and the score that they got from the list that I just went through is uh, what I gave them in terms of the score. So the V60 came in at 900. It costs a thousand, so that's a hundred dollars difference in terms of how much it costs versus how much they're charging. So uh, here we have the Galaxy S20. It got a 925, but it costs a thousand, so it's only a $75 difference. Uh, the Galaxy S20 Ultra got a 975, but cost $1,400 for a, a difference of $425, which is huge, absolutely huge, which I don't think anybody should be surprised about. Uh, down here, we've got the Galaxy S20 Plus. 950 is the score that it got. Uh, it's $1,200, so $250 overpriced on the PHT scale. And then we've got the Note 10 Plus. It scored 1000 uh, cost 1200 when it was new, so $200 is how much the Note 10 Plus is overpriced. The Note 10 got a score of 875 950 is what they charged when it was new, so $75 overpriced. We've got the OnePlus 8 Pro, 875 was the score, $900 is the price. The OnePlus was only $20 uh, overpriced. So the OnePlus 8, now this scoring this one was hard, but I, I ended up giving it the same score as the OnePlus 8 Pro just because there weren't enough differences between the two in the categories that I was using to really make any sort of difference. So we've got 875 as, as the score from the PHT value chart, and then $700 being how much it actually costs. And that means it's... A better value by $175. You get $175 more phone based on this scale than you than you were actually than you're actually paying. So that's that's pretty good. The iPhone 11, 950 was what it ended up getting. Cost a thousand dollars, fifty dollars over. iPhone 11 Pro Max, one thousand dollars is what it scored and it's $1,100 for the baseline model. So that's $100. Uh, and again, this is all just for baseline models. I, I wanna make that clear. This is all just for the baseline. And again, I wanna reiterate, this is all for the baseline models, the models that uh, you know come in at the, at the very starting point for each model. Uh, I'm not going up into you know, other features that you can get for more money. So the iPhone 11 Pro gets is is $100 overpriced according to this scale. Now we get to the iPhone 11, very interesting. Score of 900 actually costs $700, so $200 of savings, $200 of better value. Uh, the iPhone SE, I since this is a newer, a newer phone, I, I, I threw it in here. Now, we know that it's, it's not all the same phone as everything else, but I thought it would be interesting to see how well it scores on this value scale. $700 is what my value scale scored it as, and $400 uh, is what it costs. So you've you got a better value in, in terms of that $300. So that's pretty amazing. Now the pixels interested me because I've always thought the pixels were overpriced. But according to my scale, the Pixel 4 is underpriced by $75. And the Pixel 4 XL is the only one that comes in 
even. It's worth 900 on the scale, and it actually cost 900 That surprised me. I thought the Pixels would not fare as well, but, uh, you know, kind of surprising. Overall, as I look at this list, there are some things, as I just said, were, were kind of surprising. Some things that were not as surprising. The phone that surprised me the most was probably the S20 Plus, because I really felt like the S20 Plus was the better value when it came to the S20 phones, but the better value for the S20 phones is is the Galaxy S20. The V60 is close. Uh, the Galaxy Notes, uh, they're good, they're good. OnePlus did very well, again. The OnePlus 8 actually is was our first one that went under. And then the iPhones, the iPhones fared better than I thought they would. And the iPhone 11 and iPhone SE both went under. Pixel 4 under, Pixel 4 XL right on the money. Very surprising. Look forward to hearing what you guys have to say down in the comments.